Hey, welcome to the fourth exercise of this quick start guide. Today, we are going to learn how we can customize the pure market making strategy that we created before by adding the price seeding price floor feature and why this feature can be important when running market making strategies. So, well, let's get started. Markets with low liquidity are easy to manipulate. As you can see in this example, in less than 8 hours, the price of this token pumped 39% and then returned to the original price. If you were doing market making here, probably your sell orders are going to be executed in the uptrend and when the downtrend starts, you are going to start buying the asset. That means that you are going to sell low and then buy high. And this is not a good scenario for you. So how we can prevent this? One method to mitigate this risk is to define a price window. Below the floor price, the bot won't place sell orders. And above the seeding price, the bot won't place buy orders. Now it's time to understand how we can define these limits. In this case, we are defining the limits based on the recent maximum and minimum price. But it's up to you how you want to define these limits. In the next example, we will use a statistical approach to create a dynamic price seeding price floor and adjust the parameters based on the market conditions. But for now, let's stick to this basic example. We will extend the file used in the last example, that is quick start script 2. Let's recap a little bit the ONTIC method. Here we are cancelling all the orders, then creating the proposal, adjusting the proposal to the budget, placing the orders and updating the create timestamp. Here we can introduce the filter to check if the orders are inside the bounds or not. First, let's define the limits for the price ceiling and price floor. As we are trading in Ethereum, I will select 1700 and 1600 We can introduce the change here by creating the new proposal filter and we can define a new method that is apply price ceiling floor filter to the proposal and then we will need to pass the proposal filter to adjust proposal to budget. So this method should check if the order is inside the bounds and based on if it's buy or sell we'll be checking the price ceiling or the price floor and then it's going to return a list of only the orders that are valid. So now let's define that method. This is a method that we are going to use, as you can see, is filtering based on the type of the trade type and the price ceiling or price floor, and is returning the list of the proposals filtered. We are ready, now it's time to run the script, so you can open the terminal and follow me. Don't forget to activate the code environment. As you can see, the bot is placing the two orders because they are inside the bounds. Let's change now the bounds to only place the buy orders. We can use this value as a reference that the order is placed at, at this price, so let's use this price as a reference. Just to demonstrate that it's working, we're going to modify the price hitting price floor to this value, it doesn't make sense, but it's just to demonstrate how it works. As you can see now, the bot is only placing the buy orders, so it's working as expected. I hope that you liked this tutorial. And in the next one, we are going to see how we can create a dynamic price seeding price floor.